Hey guys, Hofstra here, and today I'm going to be showcasing the three new STs from the ST Story of War 3 campaign. This is on private testing where DECA allowed me access to test out some of these new sets before they started dropping in-game, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the three mini ST reviews. So firstly, let's start out with the Slurp Skyon Wizard. The staff of this set is called the Tide Turner Trident, which I have already showcased on this channel, but for those who haven't seen it, here's the DPS chart comparing it to the Vital Unity and the Edictum Prioritis from the ST Necro set. As you can see, the DPS is better than both other staffs, until around 130 defense where it starts to even out. This staff has 70 to 105 damage, 3 shots, and a very small true range, meaning that you have to be very close to hit all the shots, making it difficult to get the full DPS out of this staff. I would use this staff in Godlands and mid-level dungeons, as you can easily get close to enemies on Wizard to hit all the shots. Now let's move on to the ability of the set. We have the Slurpian Sea Scroll. This spell is very different than other spells as instead of an explosion of shots, it does the AoE particle similar to the Necro Skull. The ability does about 650 to 950 damage, making it all right at clearing minions that have low HP and low defense. It has a three tile radius, making it pretty decent, uh, but the unique effect of this spell is that it gives the user 25 speed for two seconds. This can be very useful for rushing um, and it does stack so every time you use it you get half of the original value so the first use will be 25, second, 12 and a half and so on. This spell costs 120 MP which makes it pretty hard to spam rush unless you have a very good pet as the speed boost only lasts for two seconds. Next we have the armor, the oceanic apparel which gives 55 HP, 8 defense and 8 speed. So this robe has decent survivability as well as a pretty good speed buff to go with it. And the set, I wouldn't really use this robe outside of the set because it lacks offensive stats like mana and attack. But if you're trying to rush and you don't want to take a lot of damage, definitely pop this on. The Solus robe would be much better for tanking though. Lastly, we have the ring, the Imperial Keepsake. This gives 55 HP and 8 speed. Just like before, it's not a really good ring unless you use it with the whole set. The partial ST bonuses for this set are as follows. Two pieces gets you 20 HP, 2 def, and 2 speed. Three pieces gets you 30 more HP, 4 defense, and 3 speed. The full set gives you 40 HP, 10 attack, 6 def, and 4 speed. So on screen you can see the stats for the entire set when you're maxed out 8-8. Pretty good speed, not bad attack. I really like the set as you can fly around Godlands and deal massive damage with the staff. Problem is, this set really sucks for bossing. The spell and the staff just don't deal enough damage to single targets unless you're really close, and even then the spell still does nothing compared to stuff like the tablet and the parasite spell. I would say to use the set in mid-level dungeons, Godlands, etc. where the staff really shines, and you can speedy around and deal crap tons of damage. Next we have the Daring Discover Samurai set. The weapon, the Kiri Sukuru, I probably butchered that, is a slow firing, high damage, piercing katana. Its DPS passes the top tier katana at 99 defense, and the other SD katana, the Quartz Cutter, at 34 defense. At 5 range, this katana has a little boost over the 4.75 of the tiered katana, making it about equivalent to an ancient stone sword with piercing capabilities for katana classes. Other than that, it's not really good for DPS unless you wanted that extra little range or you just really wanted to hit high damage shots. The Waki of the set, the Wata Rimono, I believe that's how it's pronounced. I tried harder on this one. It has four shots that deal a massive 700 to 800 damage. There's no piercing, no expose, and it has a smaller range than most other Wakis. It costs 100 MP. This walkie is amazing for single target bosses as you can deal crazy damage with it, but it lacks crowd control potential like the tiered walkies due to the lack of piercing. I would consider this pretty good at boss fights where there are no minions such as Marble Colossus or Void as you don't want any of those shots hitting minions over the bosses. The armor is the reinforced root armor. It gives 20 defense, 4 speed, and 60 MP. 20 defense is pretty low for just a little speed and MP boost, you're probably better off using the fire battle armor or the fairy plate if you're not using this on the whole set. 
Another setback to this armor is it has an effect called Fragile Scales, which gives the user minus 15 speed for 4 seconds when you're hit for anything over a 60. This is on a cooldown of 10 seconds, meaning that a good amount of the time you're playing and taking shots, you're going to be down 15 speed. Now this isn't a big deal with the full set on because you do have 75 speed with the total set, so it only knocks you down to the original 55 of the samurai, but still, that is a massive hit for anyone that is using this armor. For the ring, we have the Traveler's Trinket. It gives 70 HP, 6 speed, and 3 attack. This ring isn't all that bad for the stats it gives. It wouldn't be a bad PPE item as well uh, before you get something like an XHP, but other than that, the stats are nothing crazy, so kind of like the Rusty Cuffs and all the other weird ST rings, it's not the best without the set. And for the partial ST bonuses for the set, we have two pieces gets you three attack, three def, two speed. For three pieces, you get 50 HP, three defense, three speed. For four pieces, you get 40 HP, six attack, and five defense. So here are the stats with the full set. As you can see, pretty high attack, pretty high defense, pretty high speed, unless of course you proc the armor, which you probably will. Other than that, no other bonuses that are notable. This set is very good for fighting bosses on the samurai as you have high attack, decent range, and crazy single target damage. The one thing that the set lacks is the crowd control. Because of that slow firing katana and non-piercing walkie, it would be very hard to kill any group of monsters that was coming at you. I would stick to using the set in Lost Halls, Shatters, Fungals, and any other endgame dungeon where there is a boss fight with not a lot of minions. I also found that it can be good for rushing as long as you don't proc that armor. Lastly, we have the Court Magician Sorcerer. Now, this one's pretty interesting, so stick around. For the weapon, we have the Magic Wand. So each shot deals 40 to 140 damage. They all boomerang back to the player. They pierce, and they pass through obstacles. It has a 150% fire rate, meaning that you can pump out a lot of DPS to low defense monsters, but it quickly falls off. It will beat the top tiered wand until about 25 defense, with the Wand of the Fallen always out damaging it. The Light Show Scepter is a really interesting item as it gives 10 whiz but minus 30 MP on use. With the full set, you can only use the Scepter once every 5 seconds as the mana that you have is extremely limited. Without the full set, it only deals 296 damage to 5 targets. And for 125 MP, it's really not good. I would not use that without the set. However, with the full set on, you can get 710 damage to 13 targets with no damage fall off for each target that it hits. This one-time use scepter is extremely strong and can clear out a room in the press of the spacebar, but once again, you can only use it every five seconds when it is this powerful. Next, we have the Magician's Robe. It gives 30 HP, 12 defense, 6 dex, 6 whiz, and minus 50 MP. I like this robe because it gives a good balance between tanking and damage with a decent trade-off of minus 50 MP. Using this item with the set makes the scepter even more worse because of the MP you lose, but it's essential to get that final whiz bonus, so you have to put it on. But on its own, it's not the worst item for classes that don't use a lot of mana, such as the Bard and the Necro. For the ring of the set, we have the Performer's Hat. This is also a very unique item with two different effects. The first effect being, if you take damage, there's a measly 15% chance to spawn a bunny decoy for 5 seconds. If the 15% chance procs, then there's a massive 20 second cooldown on the decoy, making it something you cannot rely on. But hey, it might save you randomly. The second effect is a 15% chance on taking damage to spawn a dove to fly around and deal 400 DPS to things around you for 5 seconds in a 5 tile range. This is a pretty good DPS boost, but once again, a 15% proc rate when taking damage makes it a not very reliable one, especially since you're playing Sorcerer and you're probably going to be standing back more than usual. The stats of the ring are 70 HP, 4 whiz, and 4 dex, so if you don't have a decent ring already that gives you a bit of HP and offensive stats, then go ahead and use this because the effects might be worth it. The partial bonuses of the set are for 2 pieces, you get 2 dex, 3 def. For 3 pieces, you get 3 dex, 4 def, 5 whiz. And for 4 pieces, you get 60 whiz and minus 185 MP. The total stats of this set are as follows. 770 HP, 150 MP, 70 attack, 44 defense, 60 speed, 75 dex, 75 vit, and 135 whiz. This is of course on an 8 sorcerer. Overall, this set is pretty crowd control focused, doing hardly any damage to single boss targets. 
I would use this set for clearing any dungeon where there are a lot of low HP monsters, as the Wand and Scepter are amazing at crowd control. Examples of this would be the Abyss and the Nest. So that's going to be it for these three ST sets. I hope you enjoyed this mini review. I don't have much gameplay as the testing servers were closed to us. These ST sets hopefully will be dropping soon or appearing in the mystery boxes as they were only available through the campaign. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.